money is the easiest part. It's saving it, investing it, and utilizing it in the right way, which is hard. Life isn't easy for anybody, me included, regardless where you're from. Life chucks all sorts of unexpected situations and scenarios at you. Being able to deal with them is another thing. You are the company you keep. Like you say, most travelers all know how to get a pound note, but that's who you've been brought up with. You have some mental clarity in your mind that I want this audience to understand on how you're managing money. In our life, we are going to face more rejection than we are acceptance or positive attitude from someone. I'm not going to be happy until I'm flying in a private jet, going to wherever I need to go, and money is not a problem. For me, yes, money is a problem. In any case, whatever you're doing, you make a mistake once, it's a lesson. You do it twice, it's a decision. What you've got to take into consideration is I'm measuring myself against my father. Now, that's a hell of a place to be measuring yourself up against. If you had to check out the world tomorrow, you can only leave this audience with one pearl of wisdom that will allow them to move their life forward in all areas. What would it be? You just give me the key right there. Quick one before we jump into this podcast. Do me a solid favor. Hit that like button. Hit subscribe and drop a comment below this video. If you're looking to remove images, videos, search results, or fake accounts online, go to contentremoval.com. But don't take my word for it. Here's on Mosey. Frank, you're a legend. I just saw this. Layla also thinks you're a legend, which in my mind means you're... <laughs> Which also, which means you're a double legend in my mind. If you get my wife to think you're a legend, then you're you're extra cool in my mind, dude. Thank you so much. Genuinely, that was um, such a pain. Welcome back to the Frankie Lee podcast, coming to you live from not my penthouse apartment, Alfie Best Junior's penthouse apartment. Welcome, welcome, my man. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much. It's a privilege. Thank you for having me on it, mate. I um the reason I wanted to get you on is because obviously. Your journey has been a mad one, obviously, with everything you do. Obviously, you've come from the traveling community. You've, you've, you've built a, a business with tens of millions of pounds, like turnover. And obviously, as a, you're a wheeler dealer. You're a former boxer. Well, no, current boxer. But, mate, I just wanted to kind of give people an insight into coming from, from that background and obviously working your way up to where you are right now. So just give us a bit of an insight in what life was like growing up for you. I had a, I had a very uh, a normal childhood. You know, I was introduced to some very good contacts, which I'm very close friends with now. Uh, life isn't life isn't easy for anybody, me included, regardless where you're from. Um, listen, life chucks all sorts of unexpected situations and scenarios at you, and being able to deal with them. Is, is, is another thing and from a very young age I was taught that and being able to adapt in situations uh, also helps but I had a, I had a relatively uh, uh, normal childhood that, uh, listen everybody's childhood and everybody's past is di- different in its own way yeah mate like, see I've watched your journey over the last few years obviously coming, coming off the back of like your reality TV stuff and everything like that watching your dad obviously one of the one of the other reasons I wanted to get you on and introduce you to this audience is because, obviously, we, you must have learned a hell of a lot about making money from from your dad. Obviously, your dad owns um, owns a lot of parks across the UK, hundred parks now. I think he's got to. He's obviously one point two billion. I mean, you can learn a hell of a lot. What were some of the things that he kind of instilled in in you from a youngster? Because obviously, like making money must have been one of those things that he instilled, right? Of course, but. <clears throat> Realistically, not that making money is easy because it's far from it, but making money is the easiest part. It's saving, investing it, and utilizing it in the right way, right? Which which is hard, you know. Because once we get money, we want to go and spend it. We want to go and enjoy ourselves. Well, to be successful, that's not that that's not the way forward, you know. Yes, you can give a good, you can live a good life for a short while, but to be successful long term. You have to put money to work in the right places. Money needs to work for you. And if my dad's taught me anything, the things that have stuck are the very simple lessons, i.e. determination. Determination and persistence will get you where you need to go. It's a formula that works globally and for everybody. If you're persistent and determined to get where you want to go, it will happen. It's inevitable. Yeah. It's just a time. It's just, there's a time delay. I think people misunderstand the time delay in it, don't they? There's obviously a time delay between people just want to get the instant gratification of the result before they've actually put in the work for a longer period of time. It's, it's no different to like podcasting or anything else. You know, you have to put in the yards before you start to see any rewards in that. Well, listen, for some people, things do happen overnight. Some people, uh, it, it just happens. It does. But for, for for the average person or for the average business. 
determination. Not everybody's got talent. Some people do have talent. Some people come from a privileged background. Some people don't. Now, some people have advantages. Some people don't. But like I say, determination and persistence will pay off regardless where you come from. Yeah. Well, what do you think? What do you think some of the things that you learn in the traveller community that kind of that have helped propel you to this level though? Like there, there's some, obviously coming up um, when I was around the boxing gyms years ago, all the travelling boys box, they've all got a high worth it, work ethic when it comes to boxing and fighting and that. And they, they all know how to turn over a pound note, every single one of them. What is it that's getting taught to you in those early days that's probably not getting taught to everyone else? Because uh, tra- travelling boys have a way of, of of really turn over a pound note from the day they're born, mate. They're, ne- they're never short of, a, short of a bob. I genuinely believe it is a natural wit which comes with being a traveller and, and being around it. You know, it's, it's, it, you are the company you keep. And like you say, most travellers or all travellers all know how to get a pound note. Well, that's who you've been brought up with. That's all you know. Yeah. Do, do, do you kind of think then, so, so is it something like, obviously you boys start boxing when you're like four or five years old on, on, on the front of the park there. But like, do you, is it similar? Do you start buying and selling at a young age as well? Absolutely. We come out of school at a very young age. We, 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 we're adults before our time. That They're going to work with their dads from a very young age. If some come out of school very early, some don't go to school at all. It's the school of hard knocks. They start working with their dad, and that's real. That's real life experience. You're not going to learn anything better than learning on the job. Yeah, because because a lot because a lot of it is like you guys start to obviously whether if your dad's a tarmac, you'll be a tarmac. If you, if your dad does paved driveways, you do paved paved driveways. So it, it, was was the benefit to you that your dad knew that he wanted to own parks? Was he teaching you the inner workings of that? Well, th- my dad has been very. He's concentrated on his own business and concentrated on himself, which is not a bad thing. So it's basically not left me to my own devices because he's always been there to give me advice as and where he can. Whether it's the advice, what he thinks is right. Now, because he thinks it's right doesn't make it right. Um, So I've just had to create my own path and do my own thing. See, my dad's never had nothing to do with watches. He's, he's, He's never really had anything at all to do with tickets for events and I've had to find my own ways and I've done plenty of businesses that my dad hasn't now I I do have two mobile home parks because another rule that my dad lives by is stick to what you know yeah um but um I don't I don't I don't don't really know how to how to answer that question in in, in every other way is it like I've, I've like I say he's always been there he always will be there as long as he's alive and I will always go to him for advice. And sometimes he comes to me for advice. And the advice that he gives me, if he's talking uh, uh, advice of, of where I am in my life now, back when he was my age, things have changed dramatically and drastically since he was my age. Business is very different. I just I just love the way that looking from the outside in, as, as from my perspective, looking at you and your dad and, and how I envisage him teaching you the ways to allow yourself to open your wings and free yourself. That's quite a unique thing that not everyone has, has a dad that can teach him some of the skills that he must have instilled in you and the work ethic. So, so what would you say to anyone listening to this, who's out there trying to, trying to, trying to make a break is, is one of the best things to start doing is to learn how to buy and sell. Cause I kind of, from, from looking at your journey, like buying and selling is, is the key, is the key and that, and the key to it all, isn't it? Like the, well, that's what's made me. Now, that, that's worked for me, being able to buy and sell. And I had a natural ability to do that and to see the profit in things and understanding the market of the job that I'm in. Yeah. Now, it's very easy to say, but it sounds a lot easier than what it is to buy something cheap and sell it expensive. Now, you have to find a customer database, who you, the market you're going to sell it to, and you're going to need to sell, uh, find a supplier. Now, the thing is, people are not just going to sell you stuff cheap because you've got a customer. If they can find their own customers, they're not going to sell it to you cheap. It's a lot easier than what it sounds. Yeah. What do you, what do you, what, so what do you think the, the, if you're young, there's a lot of like young people listen to this podcast that want to be more entrepreneurial. There's a lot of people listening to this that have businesses. What, what, what is the, what is the fastest way for them to like take themselves to the next level by, you know, what, what, what should they, what should they do? Yeah, that is a it's a difficult question for me to answer. What I would advise is 
I would try to get into something you enjoy because if it's something you enjoy, it's not a job, it's a lifestyle. Um, but in reality, you need to go where you can make money. Yeah. And something you know and something you understand. Sometimes the worst thing you can possibly do is just go to a job to, or, or, or find a business because you enjoy it. When in reality, you know nothing about it. Because the idea of, of, of having some businesses, I, I had a nightclub when I was younger, and the idea of owning the nightclub far outgrew it actually earning money. Let's just talk about that. So, like, obviously, you facilitated buying a nightclub, but before you get there, you obviously have to make the money to facilitate buying the nightclub. So, how did you get started in terms of when did you start? How did you first start turning over money and start stacking cash? Ever, ever, ever since I was in school, I used to buy and sell sweets. And, and and leading up to that, I, I always used to do little bits and pieces uh, 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 growing up, you know, from a very, 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 very young age. I used to enjoy it. I love it. I enjoy earning money. It's brilliant. I, I, I buzz off of it. You know, it keeps me ticking over. It keeps me going, whether it's £10 or £10,000. I love earning money. I love turning money over. I love business. Um, and then from there, I come out of school when I was 12 years old. And then when I come out of school, I bought a van, hired a driver, and I used to go to off-licenses, industrial estates. And I used to sell industrial equipment, floor mats, toilet paper, blue paper towel, uh, just cold calling, which, please believe me, will teach you a lot of lessons. But the good thing about it was, for me, I started doing that very young. I wouldn't. It's better to stay. It's better to start late than never. Um, but for me, because I started young, they're good. Good lessons. What I learned, like rejection, to be able to handle rejection and keep pushing forward. Yeah, is is a is a brilliant lesson, and and then it becomes natural and an ability because in our life we are going to face more rejection than we are acceptance or, or, or a positive attitude from someone. Do you feel some of that rejection came from people that either, was it more from people that didn't want to buy the product or more from the fact of like, you know, because sometimes there can be a bit of a stigma because like when you're selling stuff on the street, like you're talking about from a travelling background, was there any of that stigma as well? Like was there any of that you had to face coming through? There was a little bit of everything. Of course, there was uh, there was there was a little bit of everything that that, that went on. It was because I was a traveller, because I was young. But again, some people didn't even know I was a traveller. But then it did also have a positive effect. Sometimes, sometimes I could go in somewhere they look, see that I was young, see that I was trying, yeah. And then they they wouldn't even need it, but they would look and think, you know, maybe they was a kid. Of course, they was a kid at some part of their life, but maybe they was an entrepreneurial kid when they was younger and they didn't like, because if someone come to me and tried to sell me something at a young age and I see they was trying, if I could help, I would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would yeah. make me feel good about myself because I was that person once upon a time. I still am. I still am. I get rejected to this day. Yeah. And it's about learning to deal with that rejection as soon as possible. Exactly. So that's it's helped. It's helped me. That's that 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 is that is the that's the key I've got from you so far is the fact of like you've you've had to go through adversity and had to be told no so many times in order to learn how to get to the yes because that's that that's the critical part isn't it it's no it's knowing that there's always a way to the yes and there's always you got to knock on just one more door one more door one more door so it's about being relentless in the pursuit of what you want but also being able to to take those knocks along the way isn't it without getting disheartened yeah. so you can take them knocks along the way without getting disheartened which. I get disheartened. Still to this day, I get disheartened. But that doesn't stop me aiming towards where I want to go. Because every time you face a little bit of rejection, it's like a little piece of you gets taken away. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. You know, it takes a little bit of your confidence. But like I say, that's why some people, they quit. And th when you quit, that's it. You, you, you're done. Like even even if you quit for a day, a week, a month, however long, you need to just keep pushing. That's why I say persistence. It's all about that momentum, isn't it? Listen, consistency. Consi like you said, a lot, a lot in business. And I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about customers and 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 uh, customers, suppliers. It's a numbers game. If you knock on ten doors, one is eventually going to open. If you can't find what you're looking for cheap enough, keep searching. Now, even to even so, selling the stuff sometimes isn't enough. Finding it for a cheap enough price to be able to resell it is also half the job. Yeah, like the, the a lot of, a lot of thing a lot of time that things come with selling. Like people look like oh you buy it and you sell it. It's not as easy as that. 
you have to find the product. You have to make sure the product is what they say it is. Because there is also people out there looking to catch you out, yeah. which is 100% legal to do. But that's your own problem for not doing the certain amount of due diligence, which it takes also. Like, you know, what, what people see from a business, any, any business, regardless what it may be, whether you may be selling cars, whether you may be selling watches, is the end result. And the end result is more or less having a car full of stock. You're three quarters of the way there. You've only got to sell it then. But finding it, making sure that they are what they are and they were sold to as, as what they were supposed to have been yeah, is, 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 is the hardest part, which in, in reality people think, that oh, no, we just buy it and sell it. Well, it doesn't work like that. There's so yeah. much more that goes on. It's like a film, for example, uh, um, a film that, like you know, Steven Spielberg, Jurassic Park. We see the end result, but we don't see what goes on behind the scenes and what is actually going on. Yeah, yeah, and how and how and the, and the work and the ethic that's required in order to get that to, to make market it successful. Well, and even when you bring it to market, it's about you don't know you don't they didn't know on day one that that's, until they've done a few of them they don't know they're going to be a success. Well, it's a risk, isn't it? <clears throat> it's a risk, and that and that I think that's why a lot of of course <clears throat> people are going to uh, if you was, if you was in the film industry. Once one film successful, that's why they bring out a sequel and et cetera, et cetera. Because yeah, because they've proved the concept. Exactly, exactly. So essentially, what you're saying is, fight, start to start to buy and sell stuff because it's going to teach you so much about life. Whether you win, lose, or draw, it's going to teach you about life. And then when you find something that you that kind of resonates with you, that you're kind of passionate about, that you have a, have an interest in, lean more into that. Get be relentlessly focused on on executing on that one or two things that you like. Obviously, you like watches and you like tickets. That's what you buy and sell, and it's made you a lot of money. Once you find that, kind of lean into that and push and push forward in that. And that's how you can that's how you can stack your first bit of cash to then go and invest into your into your parks and your nightclubs, right? To, to be honest, I bought my mobile my first mobile home park way before I started doing watches. I started doing watches in twenty twenty. So how did you, how did you how did you structure? Talk to me about how you structured buying that first mobile loan park like in terms of like how did you stack the cash how many years did it take to stack the cash and then how did you structure it so you can buy your first one well like i said i come out of school very early and from being 12 to being 17 or, or 6 17 or 18 which was the age i was when i bought my first park was crucial years to me i never had no overheads i never had no bills so everything i was earning i was saving right yeah which yeah. helps which I've got a four or five years head start. People don't come out of school and st- or they go from school to university and then start working from there. Yeah. And they're behind. They're starting from scratch with nothing. So when I come out, when I come out of school, I started working and then I did get overheads. When I had a driver, I had to pay diesel insurance for my van. I had to own a vehicle. Yeah. Right. But I was still earning money. My overheads was very minimal because I lived at home with my mum and dad. I had no, I had no outgoings apart from what it cost me to get out and go to work. From then, there's there's bits and pieces I've done in between, and and, and to be honest, we'd, we'd be here for a very long time. But I'll I'll cut a long story short. Like I've done a lot of businesses, some that have been very successful, and some that have failed. And I hold my hands up to every every single one. I've done. Uh, uh, I used to have a drainage clearance company yeah. when I was. This was around the same sort of time I was doing the park. So I like to keep active. And just going back to what you were saying about um, about trading, it keeps your mind active and keeps you switched on because you have to be sharp. Because if you buy something, you can equally lose money just as quick as you can earn it by buying something too expensive or buying the wrong product. Yeah. But so in, in between, then I come out of school, I started buying, an, uh, I obviously it was cold calling, from then, I started doing travellers' parties. Now, this was the foundation of... This is where the foundation come from, from my mobile home park. And I started doing travellers' parties, which you understand a little bit about yeah, the travelling community. Break, break, I, I, I do, but break down for the audience, like... Because, obviously, some of my audience is in Australia and that. Break down for the audience, like, what... Essentially, what you're saying when you're saying traveller parties. Well, they're parties for a particular community, which was the travelling community, yeah, which, because they're not... Yeah. They, they're... they're not welcomed everywhere, especially not as a group. So, see, especially not so to give clubs. people a bit of context, if you're listening abroad, America or Australia, like the traveller community is the gypsy community in the UK. And obviously, like you, you might have seen TV programmes like Big Fat Gypsy Weddings, you know, all those kind of things. That, and Alfie's talking about the fact of like 
you know, in some parts of the UK, there's a bit of stigma around coming from I, the traveling community. I think, I think all over the, I think all over the world, travellers are worldwide. Yeah. Or gypsies are worldwide. Right. They are. I would, I would imagine that they would. I don't know if there's any off in Australia, but in the US, there's loads, loads, and I didn't know that until about 2016. Yeah. But. So I started uh, uh, hosting travellers' events in a nightclub. Now, again, end result is the party, is the event. Finding a venue to host it is where the hard work come into it. Promoting it was relatively easy. But finding somewhere that would let you bring five or 600 travellers to their, to their venue was very difficult. But, like I say, numbers game again. I was more or less cold calling, ringing clubs up, halls or wherever I possibly could and facing a lot of rejection. I ended up finding someone, a contact actually, that his club wasn't doing too good. And I said, well, maybe I can step in and I might be able to earn you a little bit of money over the Christmas, over Valentine's or whenever it is. You keep the bar money, I'll keep the door. I used to charge £20 a head to come in to the venue and obviously what they used to spend behind the bar is he used to keep, so that was irrelevant to me. So... I done three or four events at this uh, at this club. Afterwards, he come to me and said, "Do you want to buy into the club?" And as I said before, the idea of owning it and me thinking of the lifestyle that I was going to have, my mind come off of earning money, which in my head I thought it was going to earn money, but in reality it didn't. I didn't know that till afterwards. But when you're when you're taking that door money, yeah. say you're taking what. How much are you taking a night at this point? Well, let's say that there was a thousand people come in the venue and you got twenty pounds a head, that's twenty thousand pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so when you take twenty grand in, what are you but let me just it wasn't it would be more like five hundred people. So let's say yeah, five grand. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, ten grand. T- t- say say you take ten grand in. Just so that people are because I want this want the audience to understand this. How much of that are you stacking away? And putting into into what in, into squirreling away in your savings in order for you to be able to buy assets down the track. I put it all away. I saved every penny. I've listened. I used to take out a little bit of spending money, or I'd go and treat myself to make it all much better. Because I'd, I've, I'd, I'd. Sometimes you can punish yourself, and I believe that you want to make life easier, make life enjoyable, and have reasons to go and get it. That makes it easier again, and gives you an incentive and a drive. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I did take a small amount to go and treat myself. To be honest with you, I can remember after one party, I went and bought three pairs of Beats by Dr. Dre headphones. And that was like a real good treat to me. Like, And, and that I was looking forward to it. But you've got to imagine I was, I was still relatively young. So someone, the, the person that I went to to host the Travellers event said, do you want to buy the nightclub? And I went back to my dad. And I was very young. I was 16 at the time. Went back to my dad, put it across to him and said, should I do it? Would it be a good investment? Now, I didn't know the overheads that it come with. And I've never had overheads really apart from very minimal of the businesses I was running, which I, you know, I used to work for myself, so I didn't have any wages to pay. I had a driver, you know, back then there was 50 or 60 pounds a day, diesel and food throughout the day. It's mad, isn't it, when you think about it, that you had your getting proposition to buy a nightclub at 16 years old, you've got a driver driving you around and you're and you turning over like 10, 20 grand every party like at 16 years old. This, this is what, this is, your success is no accident. Obviously, you turn over 10, 10 20 grand a week at 16 years old. It wouldn't, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't have been a week. It was every event, every occasion. So say Valentine's Day, Christmas. So I could do it three or four times a year in reality. So what, what, do, you reckon, what do you reckon then, if you put a number on it, what do you reckon you'd turn over at 16 years old a year? I don't know. I don't know. Like, it's a very, very difficult question for me. It's a very difficult question for me for answer because I was just packing it away. You're stacking it. So when you when you when you came to, how long was it before from from those days? Was it before you could leverage what you'd saved and screw it away and then put it into your first park? Well, what happened was, I ended up cut a long story short. I ended up taking half of the nightclub on, and I had to pay some pay some debts off, which was basically the money that I paid. So I bought half into the club. Yeah. I wanted to run it as a normal nightclub, right? So. I wasn't hosting travellers' parties there, right? Which was my f- 
forte, should you say. That was what I was should good at. That's what into, I knew. Yeah, yeah. Which, uh, which maybe I should have looked at. But the problem is they are not successful every weekend. They are successful on occasions. And I knew that. But I thought I was just going to open the doors, people was going to come running in my nightclub, and I was going to earn loads of money. But that was not what happened whatsoever. What happened was I opened the doors, I stood there by myself, and I was hemorrhaging money, hand over fist. So not only have I invested money into the nightclub, it's now costing me money to open the doors. I've got rents, PRS, uh, a PRS is a music licence, yeah, yeah. bills I didn't even know about. Yeah. I didn't even know coming through the door thinking, wow, what's that? When in reality, I've never really had a bill in my life. <laughs> yeah, mental. <laughs> but it's, uh, it was, it was a, a, a massive a massive learning curve. And then Halloween come up and I said, right, now's the time. I will host a travellers event. Hosted a travellers event. It was the last event I ever hosted in the nightclub. I hosted it, managed to get all my money back with a small profit. And then from that, I sold the nightclub. Once I sold the nightclub, then I went and bought my first mobile home park. And is, and and the the takeaway from that for you was one: you had some good business lessons in terms of understanding profits, losses, and bills, and how bills can 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 literally wipe you out. And know so you you understood to know your numbers, but also the lesson I feel that you got from that was the fact of like, look, I should I should take the money from my buying and selling and stick it into what. I've watched my dad do, you know, and your dad's, you know, got 1.2 billion now, but he didn't have 1.2 billion no. in real estate then. He probably only had, I say only, he probably had tens of millions worth of, of, of real estate parks then. But you, you knew then at that point to stick it into, into parks, right? Property is the way forward. It was his advice of what to do because the problem is money can be spent. It's not there forever. Once you get it, like I was saying earlier on, Investing it is the hardest part. Getting it, you're only halfway there. Earning it, I would say, is the easiest part. Holding on to it and investing it in the right way and make sure it stays there because that's what money, it comes and it goes. Yeah. So what? So what is the... I would really want to dig deeper into this, into this. You have some mental clarity in your mind that I want this audience to understand on how you're managing money and how you're looking at money because obviously your mindset is that making money is easy. So making money for you is easy. I, don't, I, don't, I, do, I, do, I do not say that it's easy. It's far from easy. Far, far, far from easy. I'm saying it's the easiest part. It's the easiest part of becoming successful. Yeah, but Saving it is the and hard. investing it is the hardest part. Once you've got it, once you've got it, the first thing that comes into your mind is to go and enjoy it and to go and spend it. I know. When you've got it, you want to go and enjoy yourself. You think, oh, I've worked hard for this. Right, I'll go and enjoy myself down the pub or I'll go and enjoy myself wherever I feel like going. Oh, I want these new trainers. No, there's got to be sacrifices made. And my advice would be for anybody is that you need to be saving more than you spend. I was told from a kid, spend a little, save a little. I believe in save a lot, spend a little. Yeah. And if you've got to make sacrifices to do that, then so be it. If you're not willing to make the sacrifices, then your your in, your best interest to be successful is not is not your best interest. But but there there is something inherently that you've got within you that makes you able to because because money is an energy. You agree with me? Explain, elaborate. Like so 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 when I when I speak to a lot of entrepreneurs like yourself, and when I speak to like there's an energy about you guys. There's a there's a there's a there's a there's a reason. Yeah, it's hard work. Yeah, it's a bit of now. Yeah, it's knowing what to buy and sell. Yeah, it's all that. But there's an energy about you guys that you there's a there's a deep knowing within yourself that I see from the outside looking in that you know you're going to make tens of thousands of pounds today, tens of thousands of pounds tomorrow. You you know that. I want to teach the audience on how you get that deep knowing inside yourself so they can go and get that in and instill that within them because some people have. Um, pre-programmed money problems from their, their their lack in their childhood because their mum and dad might have worked a nine to five job they might have been in that kind of game right whereas what i see from your childhood is you were taught the value of hard work but you're also taught about the abundance of money how, do, how can people get that in a in a feeling well for me if you speak to a professional boxer and you say to them where are you going to be in five years time every single one of them would look up and say i'm going to be a world champion 
You yeah. don't go into a boxing ring thinking to myself, oh, I'm here to make up the numbers. Yeah. So it's a difficult question. It's a difficult question for me to answer, really, um, because the answer is I, d- I don't know, to be to be quite honest. But like I say, if you haven't got a goal and you're not strong-minded and, like I say, dedicated and persistent to get to where you want to go, it's, it's that's that's the that you just giving me the key right there. Because the key was you had a goal. What what age did you get straight on what your goals were then? My goals change, but they change for bigger. Yeah, they never it. go down. They only ever get bigger. Once I've achieved one goal, like before I was driving, my goal was a car. Like now I look at it, I'm not even bothered what I'm driving at the moment. It's nice to have a nice car. Yeah, it is, but I will not buy a car that's going to depreciate money. Which, is, like, like I say, is, an, is another like, you know, people look and think, oh, He's successful. I could stop. I could retire now and live a comfortable life. Very yeah. comfortable. Yeah. I'm not content with that. I'm not happy with that. I could go everywhere. I People look at me and say, oh, he's, he's had it easy, this, that. Never. I've had it easier than some. But then I've had it a lot harder than others. In reality, I I do punish myself. I do punish myself by not going and not doing what I can do. Because I can go anywhere. I can fly anywhere at any time of the year. I can go on any holiday. But no, I stop... And thinks my and it's not because I'm looking to save money. It's my time can be directed in better places at that time. And time is something you cannot get back. The money I can go and earn back. I love this. Yeah, mate. You, I've you just taught me something there because when I sacrifice, beat you, you saw the lifestyle I was living in Australia on Instagram. I was living a great lifestyle over there, and it was very abundant beaches and all that stuff but I, I, I kind of sat there and I thought to myself I've got to, I've, I've got to come back and get to work do you know what I mean I've got, got to get the moving and what you've just summarized there is, is is that's just cleared a lot in my mind for that because that's exactly what you're talking about you, you could be in Mauritius right now but if you're in Mauritius what you're saying is you're spending money and 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 your earning capacity has gone down, and you need to sacrifice some things because you you can't if you start getting too accustomed to that life you're you're going backwards, right? Of course, of course. Listen, there's a lot of quotes on Instagram, uh, uh, which I'm sure you've read. Uh, hard times create strong people. Uh, hard times create strong people. Good times create weak people. Yeah. You know, it actually goes a lot deeper and a lot further, but I can't remember it off the tip of my tongue, but I'm sure yeah, a lot yeah. of people would have seen it. And that is the truth. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying to, to, to waste your life. I'm saying to, if you've got a goal, go and achieve it. Once you've achieved your goal, then go and do whatever you please. Me, personally, I'm not happy with having a nice car. I'm not happy with this one apartment in London. I'm not happy with two mobile park homes. Yeah, I'm not going to be happy until I'm flying in a private jet, going to wherever I need to go, and money is not a problem. For me, yes, money is a problem. Really? Absolutely. Break down why it's a problem to you. Because I can't just, uh, whenever I want to go somewhere, just go. I still have to worry about my business running, which I always will. But I can't just, at the drop of a hat, I have to, like I say, I value my time. Do you understand where I'm coming from? My time is valuable. At the moment, I've got two mobile home parks which run their self. This apartment, that we're in Airbnb, because I look for the opportunities in everything that I do. Now, I bought this for myself, but I Airbnb it now. Because it works out best. Because I go to work in Hatton Garden from Monday to Friday. Usually this this apartment is airbnb of a weekend, which is great. You know, but it's seeing the opportunities. Most people think that's too much hard work. And I go back to my mum and dad's of a weekend. And if it's not rented out of a weekend, then I will stay it. But the reason, it's, it's, listen, let me rephrase that. It's not a problem. The problem is I'm addicted to it. And I want so much more of it and it's never enough. If that was, If that is the problem, that is the problem. If there was a problem there, that's it. It's never enough. But I do I do want to enjoy my life and I do want to retire and I do want to spend time with the people I like and the people that I love. And I want to be able to do everything and anything at the drop of a hat. Now, that is my next goal. My next goal is to be rich in abundance and be able to go anywhere I want, whenever I want. The total freedom is what I'm looking for. In a sense, I feel like I'm imprisoned. Really? Well, to get up and every single day, and it's not a chore for me because I love it. But in reality, I am so tunnel visioned on where I need to go and what I want to do in this life that 
when I don't go for a day's work, or when, for me, I don't feel refreshed when I come back from a holiday. I feel disappointed in what I've missed. That's, that's, that's yeah. I can, I can see, I can see where you're coming from because sometimes you come back from a week away, and you're like, and you feel like you, you're behind the eight ball, aren't you? Exactly. Well, you're you're a week or two weeks behind. There, I go on holiday. I do, and I try to enjoy myself the best I can. But my mind's not switched off. And I can do a lot from my phone, business-wise, work-wise, as as can anybody in this day and age. Technology has advanced so much within the last five years, and, and five years before that, it keeps advancing and it keeps advancing. But, like I say, it's uh, uh, I'm, just, I'm addicted to earning money, and I'm so passionate about where I want to get to in this life. Like I say, I do, I do want to retire. I do the, the work ethic, in, and I will probably never stop working. I don't think you retire. Tape, I will, I will, I will taper down. Like I will, there will be, a, there will be come to a point where I've achieved my goals, and my goals is, like I say, to be one hundred percent free, to be able to go wherever I want, whenever I want, and do whatever I want, and buy whatever I want while I'm doing it. Now that will be difficult for me still because when I have children, I want to install that life isn't easy because yeah. it's not. But there, there, there's something in your community that gets instilled. That doesn't matter how much money a family's got in your community, the child is always taught to turn over a pound note. He's always he's always put out to work early doors, and he's always taught the work ethic. Regardless of how much money you got, you all have to go and make it on your own, don't you? Like I say, it's uh, um, it's uh, the people that they're around. It's just what they've done. It's just what they've done for a very long time since you know. Through the ages, that's all that's gone on. That's what they do. You know, they work. But, but, but and, and, it, and it sounds so simple, right? But how many people do we both know that don't want to put a shift in? That don't, that, that, that want to see, basically from what you've said, it, you can't want to see, you can't want all the freedom in the world without the sacrifices of the sacrifices like you've made to be able to facilitate it. Because what, what you're essentially saying is, right, you're, you, you, you're saying that you want freedom, right? And realistically speaking, from the outside looking in, so, someone like me, who's who's a, a good few pound behind you, I'm doing well in my own life, but I'm a good few pound behind you. I would think to yourself, fuck, with the amount of with the amount of cash you've stacked and the amount of assets that you've got at this point in life, you you have got freedom, haven't you? But you're teaching even even just sat here listening to you, you're teaching me a whole different level of work ethic because you're you're saying that I've still got to go out and I've. St- and I've got to get to this number, this number, this number, this number before before I ever feel any freedom in yourself. So what is that number to you? What is the freedom number to you? Well, the freedom number to me is, like like I say, Ed, what you've got to take into consideration is I'm measuring myself against my father. Now, that's a hell of a place to be measuring yourself up against. Yeah. And to look and see what he's achieved. Now, he could stop and retire and he could live the life I'm talking about. Yeah. And he hasn't. It, but it, your, I, I think from looking at outside, your dad don't stop because you've, you've, you've set a goal and you've publicly said that you want to be the biggest park, ho- park homes holder. He, he, he said that. D- but didn't you say that as well? Uh, I want to outweigh up. Uh, listen, in Europe, I read, I read, I read an article. I read an article on you where, where they said, where they said that you said that you want to be the biggest park owner in Europe. To be honest with you, I cannot recall saying that. Maybe back in the day, that might have been something I said once I was carried away with buying my first mobile home park. I might have got carried away and said something <laughs> like that. <laughs> Regardless, I just want to be, like I say, as as I just want to be filthy rich. Literally, filthy rich. That is it. That's it, my end goal. To be able to do everything. I want to be able to experience life to the fullest and not have no restrictions for, 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 for money. What's filthy rich in this day and age? I need, my goal is to overtake my dad while he's still on this earth so he can see me do it. Yeah. And do you know what? I think think even though he would be pissed off for a week, I reckon he'd he'd just like to see it. Listen, it's a healthy competition between me and him. Yeah. It's a healthy competition. Now... Because you, you, you have, you've stacked more cash than him at the same point in time. If if we're going on years for years, right? Correct. When he was my age, he had less. Yeah. He never bought his first mobile home park till he was 25, 26, maybe even older. And you bought it when? 18. Yeah. I might have 17, 18. 17, 18. I was. 
do do you sometimes? No, I took it. I took out a mortgage yeah. to buy that mobile home park. Well, that's a, a relevant, isn't it? Yeah, but well, a lot. I just think a lot of your dad's places are based yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Listen, it's the way forward in this world. Because because this is what a lot of people don't understand that that there's there's good debt and bad debt. I mean, break. Can you break down good debt and bad debt for people? Well, I'd say bad debt is money you've took out and wasted and squandered, which is no longer there. A good debt is something that's an investment that is earning money, which is paying its own self. And you just got to structure it so you're buying more assets that actually put money in your pocket. Than, than it, and it sounds basic. It sounds basic, me saying that. But so many people have got that twisted. Do you know what I mean? Like they've got, they've got they 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 invest in things that don't take them to to where their goals are. Where I think one thing that you're you're clear on is like, okay, here's my goal, and I'm going to only invest and only put my money into things that take me towards my north star goal over here. I'm not going to go and do this over here because that's going to take me back a week, two weeks. That that's kind of your mindset with it, isn't it? One hundred percent. That's it. That's it. that's exactly how I think. But the thing is, you can still go and take out loans from the bank and invest into a business. Yeah. I.e. a nightclub, for example. Yeah. But what you do not, they do not take into consideration is if that business is not earning money, what's it doing? It's fucking costing you money. Costing money. <clears throat> it's costing money. You ne- you you never st- you never stood still in in any form of business or monetary. So. <clears throat> Money, even money I've got back in the bank today, even with the money that's sat in my bank account, right? If I don't fucking send that work, that pound out to go and make me 10p or a pound a month or whatever I'm going to do with it, if I don't send that money out, send that soldier out, then I am going backwards in, in essence because it's, because it's not, your, your money should be earning you money. So it should be into buying more products for yourself, but you know buying assets like your park homes buying buying whatever you're buying just you just should be you, sh- you got to send that money out it's got to go work for you essentially once you've earned it now you've now you've earned it it's got to go and earn money for you in some regard money should make money and that's that that is the real kit now there's other ways and means but that happens to one in a million or what maybe maybe the odds are far too good what i've just stated it might not even be one in a million it might be one in a billion that, you know, the likes you set up a business, a website, which takes off, which they have. It has happened. But in reality, and I'm not saying don't do that. If that's what you want to go and do, go and do it. Go and give it a try. Listen, if you don't try, you will never know. But yeah. it is going to come at a cost and yeah. it might not work. Yeah. You know. I, I, I honestly think, and from speaking to you before this podcast as well, I honestly think the best, the best thing that people can start with at any level, because you can start this in the job, you can start this when you're at school, you can start at any level. I think what you said about learning to buy and sell, and buy and sell something that you know, something you're passionate about, something you can, you know, buy for one pound, sell for three, you know what I mean? Like, it, 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 in this day and age, having the ability to turn one pound into three pound, one pound into four pound, or one dollar into four, et cetera, et cetera, that, that, is, that, is, that is an innate ability that you can take anywhere in the world and make, and make money flow to you. Well, all the, all the time I've got a tongue in my mouth. I'm never going to go hungry. Fuck, that's powerful. You know? Because once you learn the art of communication, communicating to people, then you, you've got an ability to turn money wherever you are in the it's world. Not, it's not even about, let's say, let's say I was to go from scratch. Now, like, unless I was to lose everything, God forbid that ever happens. Inshallah, it doesn't. But um, let's say it does, right? I would know where to start. I, I'm, I'm coming off the back of experience then, which is good. So uh, to be honest, it wouldn't be like starting from scratch. But let's just say me. I would. It hasn't got to be buying and selling something. If you are looking to try and find money, I would know where to look and where to try and get money. I would go, again, cold calling, have a tongue in my mouth. is a blessing. I would walk in there and try and earn commission-based profit to build some of my own money up, then to go and invest. Yeah. And then go out and try and find customers. There's ways and means to earn money. You've just got to look, study it, and dissect it, and then think, right, how can I get that making money? And for a business... Making money is brilliant. Then you need to start, when it's consistently making money, then start looking how you can save money. Yeah. But it, 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 it's, it's like, even when I walked in your apartment today, beautiful apartment, centrally located in London, and you, and most people who have this apartment would think they've made it. You, you're like, 
I want this, I want this, I want this. You've got goals bigger than this. But even even someone like you who has got what you've got, right? You're you're still Airbnb. You're looking for ways that this pays you back. So you're like, I will rent it out the weekend and over a year that will pay me more than the net cost of me living here for the year. And it'll pay, you like to, you like to at least break even on an asset that you own that you live in. 100%. Do you know what 100%. I mean? And, 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 and how many people are living in a home right now, like a, they're one person living in a three bed house, not renting the rooms out? To be honest with you, me personally, I wouldn't be able to rent a room out myself personally. I wouldn't be able, it depends where I was in, in, in my life, but I would rather just rent. If I never had my mum and dad's to go back to, and somebody wanted to Airbnb this for the weekend, I would genuinely, genuinely stand outside. Now, I wouldn't sleep on the street because yeah. that's not what I'm used to. That's not what I need, that's not what I need yeah, to do. Know. But I would stay out for 12 hours wandering the streets yeah, and then come back when it's free and catch up me sleep then. Yeah. Just, 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 just to make it a cash flow producing asset rather than... This, this was an investment. I didn't buy it for myself. Yeah. It was an investment. Everything I look at, I look to invest money. Because if it if if I was just living here again it would be costing me money. I'd have bills. Yeah, this is, yeah, I I love the way you look at everything. So do you what about the cars and stuff? Do you how do you structure? Do you buy, do you buy cars and sell them or do you, do you or what do you what do you do when you're structuring no, cars? No, I don't I don't I don't I don't buy and sell cars. I buy personal cars for myself to use and I try and find the cheapest or the best deal possible. Yeah. And, and doesn't have to be flash or I've had my time. I'm old now. I'm I'm old. I'm 25 years old, you know. I was since from being 17 of all like that was my goal like I said that was my goal to have a nice car was my goal the novelties wore off a little bit now I will have other cars because it, it, it's good for my image and with Instagram being what it is today it's good for content so there's a lot more that comes with it than just the car nowadays right so you're you're so, so you're you're trying to create that lifestyle content to to for people to aspire to as well in reality if it inspires people, great. But the reason I do it is because for me, Instagram is a platform for promotion. Whatever I'm doing at that time, if I have something for sale or if I'm doing something, Instagram's a place to promote it. And however many followers I gain, say you get 10% of what you've got, which sometimes you get more, sometimes you get less. Yeah. Um, they're customers. So you even- Free advertising. So even even people out there that listen to this that have got two or three thousand followers should be just using Instagram to generate business, not be using it to post their lifestyle, like like just just family photos and stuff. Well, of course, if that's what they enjoy doing, that's what they want to do. That however somebody wants to use their social media is completely up to them. For me, I post lifestyle pictures and what I'm doing to attract more of an audience. And then from that audience, I maybe have come of benefit. Maybe they want to buy a watch. Maybe they want to come and buy some tickets. Maybe they might have a property or they might have a car that they want to sell. Yeah. And they can connect to me via Instagram. And I also use Instagram to promote other people's businesses for a fee. Yeah. And it's just it's just any 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 route that with you, for you to invest your time in anything, there has to be a route to the money. Absolutely. Like you don't you literally will not do anything unless there's a route to the cash flow. I even look at going out as networking. I don't look at it as I'm going out to enjoy myself. The end result is to come back with a contact that... And the thing for me is I can say it openly because I am a benefit. I'm a benefit. People can reach out to me and there's a lot of areas I can help. And my goal at the end of a night out is to find someone of an equal that can do the same for me. Then as you go further on in your life, you never know, regardless of what his job role may be, Let's say he sells car tyres. Great. He might be able to supply me cheaper car tyres. Great. I might be able to put somebody into him and him give me a commission. And that's just an example. Yeah. And you should only... I remember one entrepreneur telling me that you should only surround yourself with people you're doing business with. Like you should, you, 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 see, you, should, you shouldn't have loads of friends that you just go out for the sake of going out. You should always be doing business with your friends. To be honest with you, I think that and again, I can say this openly because I've got a lot of friends and anybody knows that, 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 that is my friend, they know I love and think the world of them. 
They should have a benefit. I am a benefit to them. And I, if you rung me and picked up the phone, I would try to do whatever it is you ask of me. I might be the wrong person you're ringing. But yeah. as a friend, I feel like I have a duty. Yeah. And I feel like they should feel the same. And that, and that, and well, we all need help. In, in our relationship as friends, it's like, you know, I can bring a lot of contacts to the table that perhaps you haven't got. And you can bring a lot of contacts to the table perhaps I haven't got. Exactly. And, 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 and that's, what, that's how we mutually benefit each other. It's, and that's why it's a good friendship to have. Right? Exactly. Because, you know, similar interests, you know, go, going, going in the same direction, you know, might, one might be further ahead in other areas than the other, but both, going, both trying to go north. You know, not that's what you need is you need to surround yourself with people who are trying to go to that northern star. But I think one thing that you're good at identifying is not only people that you can benefit and they can benefit you, but also being only surrounded by people who who have a a, a northern star goal. You know, something that actually inspires them that they're w- working towards and, w- and walking towards. Right. Well, I've made the mistake of having people around me just because I think I like them and I like their company. Which I learned from a very young age that you know, so break break that down for me because I want to understand. I want to understand that. What do, what, well, do, what, what do you mean? Well, anybody can cater to your ego. Do you understand? Anybody yeah. can cater to your ego. Anybody can keep an act up for a couple of hours a day, or when they speak to you, when in reality their intentions are extremely bad, and a lot of people can be very jealous, especially with what I'm doing. And that, that goes for anybody. They look, they come with a big smile, uh, uh, pretend that they're trying to help you, when in reality they're not. Listen, you need to make sure everybody in your boat is rowing and not drilling holes because they are, they are out there to be had. And you fall for people like that because of their company. And when somebody is a benefit to you, you then realise that, no, this, this person is actually my friend. Look, he's trying to help me get to where I'm going. That's why I'm saying your friends need to have a benefit because then you identify whether they are trying to help you or not. Because if you were to ring me and say to me, do you know where I could get this? Do you know where I could do that? Or what would you do in this situation? If I said, I don't really know what I'd do in that situation, don't know where to get that from, then I'm not much of a friend, am I? But if I said, "Mm, I don't really know, I'll make a phone call for you. Just rung him. He hasn't got what you're looking for, but we're on the case. I'm trying. My intentions are very good. Yeah, it's about setting that clear intention. This is this is this is what I'm trying to say. And if you've just got someone round you because you like them for their company, which I'm sure people do, and I, like I say, I've done it, but I've had my fingers burnt doing it. How did you identify though? The, the how long did it take you to identify and weed out that those those friends out of your life? Just by things that happened. Uh, during that during that time, yeah, yeah, like you know, like I say to you that that they was all taking and not willing, not 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 willing to provide, not willing to help help me when I needed help. But when but when but when they wanted something, i.e., to borrow money or something, I was always there. But if the shoe was on the other foot, I just I, I couldn't imagine you lending money because like lending money to friends is always the fastest route to lose it all. 100 million thousand percent but also it's the cheapest way to get rid of them wow <laughs> mate that is profound mate that is because then you see who's, your, who's not your friend well there you go listen to be honest with you listen let's just say you lend a couple of hundred quid which uh, to be honest a lot of my friends ain't in the position i i probably lend more money from them but to be honest with you, like uh, uh, we're talking a, a, a few years ago now. Listen, not everybody's uh, not everybody's got it, you know. And uh, like I say to you, uh, uh, it's cheap, isn't it? You know, what I mean, say so lend someone two hundred, a thousand pound, they're not around you anymore. I know what they don't. That, so that so that that not you, you your the friendship to me clearly was worth more than a thousand pound because I wouldn't worry about it, and I'm just using a thousand pounds as a hypothetically, but. You clearly wasn't worth a thousand pounds of them. That's all you was worth. That's all you was worth. <laughs> Fucking hell! It's just it, I just think back to some of the people that I've lent money to. You know what I mean? Over the time, I, in my younger days, the mistakes I've made. And you're you're right. It, it might have cost me two hundred quid, 
but two hundred pound or two hundred dollars or whatever that that shows you you should you should you should potentially lend money to your friends to see who is your actual real friend and basically is what you're saying listen if they ask for it that's what friends do friends should be there to help you which like I say I am but for me that's a turning point. Because if you don't come and give me that money back, then you don't care about where I need to get to and what I want to do. That's my money. I've helped you out in a difficult situation or whatever you need money for. Have some respect and return it. I I shouldn't be ringing and chasing for my own money. I've come and helped you out. But the problem is once you help them out and you've solved their problem, it's not them that's got the problem anymore. It's you. You're left. You're left. You're you're left with. You're left holding the bag with the problem. Exactly. They've shifted the problem. You, you've you, you've shifted through. You've helped them. You've solved what needed to be solved, and now you're left with less money in your pocket. And you've just, which can be hard. You've just lost someone who you actually thought was a friend, but it's actually just took two, three, four hundred quid off you. It's an example. Listen, whatever, like hypothetically speaking, whatever the whatever amount of money it is, I just think now. Listen, obviously. Like I say to you, it is a very, 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 very cheap lesson. Long term. Like I say to you, it's not the money. It's what they could be doing behind your back. Because if they're willing to take money off you and not return it, then who knows what they're saying behind your back. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Because they clearly don't think much about you. Because how do they know you don't need it? You've you've done the right thing. And the maddest thing is, it depends on who your friends are, but I have found it very... Very, I'm trying to think of the word I'm looking for. Very, it it happens a lot that more so than not, that it actually doesn't get returned. And I'm not speaking for myself, I'm speaking to a lot of people that I know. Hey, you're speaking to a lot of people on this podcast that know exactly what you're talking about right now. More, more, more so than not, it gets taken and not returned. I want the penny to drop with the audience. Like I, want, I really want this penny to drop. Like the people, the people that aren't returning what you're lending to them are, are, are sticking their stake in the ground and they're saying, hey, we're not really friends. I don't really value you. You're only there because you can serve me in this moment and that's all I want you for. And if you guys who listen to this right now take that away from this podcast and put it into your life, that will move your life a hell of a lot further forward than it is now. And I don't care how successful you are, whether you've got a hundred million dollar a year business, hundred pound, hundred million pound a year business, or whether you're, whether you're in a job earning 40 grand a year, you're, you're, you're going to have a lot more peace of mind because you're not going to be surrounded by, by leeches, by people drilling holes in your boat, which is what Alfie's saying. Like it's, it's, it's fucking profound when you break it down, how, how important it is to make sure that everyone's rowing in your right direction, essentially. You know, and fucking, we've 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 all been around people that aren't helping our boat go forward. And that's that's kind of fucking powerful, powerful quote that was, bro. Powerful, fucking hell. I'm, I'm I'm even thinking about all the times in my life, mate, that this has happened to me that I've let it go. You know, and and these people aren't around me now, but I'm like, fuck, I should have seen that sooner. Because you're right, it tell it, it tells its own story, right? One, listen. What it is, is I believe once, and everybody deserves a shot and everybody deserves a chance. And like I say, as a friend, you have a duty to care and help. That's what friends are for, including myself. I don't rule myself out. I am that person that you can call and rely on if I'm your friend. Now, I don't have time to be friends with everybody, you know? Yeah. But I believe also... In any case, well, whatever you're doing, you make a mistake once, yeah, it's a lesson. You do it twice, it's a decision. Yep. So once is nothing. That's knowledge. That's great. Brilliant. We love learning. We want to learn. You want, you want, you want if you're going to learn 10,000 lessons in life, mm-hmm. you want to get to the point in life where you've earned, you've learned as many of those lessons and and implemented the results of those lessons in your life as quickly as possible, right? Absolutely. So what Alfie's saying to you is if you've learned the lesson once, you've lent money, it's not returned to you, you've had to cut a friendship because you now know that this person's not for you anymore, you don't need to keep repeating it every week. Exactly. It's, it's, it's like I say, there's a lot of people um, 
who earn a lot of good money, turn over a good amount of cash, but because they're so unhappy in their life, they go and they go out on the weekend, they smash themselves with beers, uh, and they smash themselves on on a bag of, on a, getting bags of drugs. Right? If on on the on the Sunday you wake up in the morning and you feel like shit, right? And you and you feel like shit the first time. That's your lesson. If you keep going out and repeating that every weekend, taking yourself further away from the freedom that you so desire, then that's a fucking choice and a decision that you're making to take yourself further away from yourself. And I think that's where um, you've you've got it so right in what you're saying. I mean, I want to die. Obviously, in the traveling traveling community, right? It's very like um, Romany, um, re- re- like the, the Christian religion, right? I have converted recently yeah. to Muslim. Yeah, yeah. This, yeah. This is what this is what I'm saying, right? And that, reverted, reverted. And this is and this is what I want to talk to you about as well, because I I wanted to understand that and how hard that is to do. You know, with 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 so, when you come from a community is as 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 religious as what you come from to be honest some are religious and some are not the same as i think in any race color uh, any ethnicity uh, it, it doesn't matter some people are religious some people are not i was not religious at all completely atheist not a complete atheist i believed that there was this is about how it all fits with me i believed that there was a god I believe that there was a God. Right. And in the Quran, there is one God, only one God. He has no partners, he has no sons, he's one God. He's single by himself. And I understood that, and that's how I felt all through my life anyway. Yeah. Not that I was, like I say, I wasn't religious, I didn't pray, but that is how I felt. Yeah. And when I started educating myself about it, Religion is a very good thing to keep you on the straight and narrow, which it has for me. And not, I was I was never in a bad place. I was never in a dark place. It just went from good to great. I am now good with God behind me. And I feel yeah. that. And now some people, I do not disrespect anybody else's religion. Whatever they want to believe, that is completely up to them. I believe in the Quran. I believe what I read. And I believe that there is one God. I believe in Jesus Christ, yeah. but I do not believe that he is the son of God. He's a prophet. He's a messenger. Yeah. So, you know, th- this causes a lot of controversy, and that's not, that's not good for business. It's not good for me, and I respect all other religions. I do, because I know that it keeps you on the path of righteousness, regardless what religion that is. Now, there's bad eggs Anywhere in any religion, you know, does does because because you're a Muslim, does that make you a good person? You can be a bad Muslim. Yeah. You can be a bad Christian. Or you could be a good Christian. You can be a bad atheist. You know? Exa- exactly. Exactly. But um But do, for, but here's here's something I kind of I've kind of been coming to terms with in my own life and you see if it resonates. I I think I've had I've, I think I've had relatively good success in a lot of areas of my life, mm-hmm. right? Um, and I just always felt, on a personal level, that this that that when I was when I was completely atheist, like I didn't believe in a god, mm-hmm. I just kind of felt like there's something a little bit missing. Like there's, there's a little bit of part there. When you got. I think you have to believe in something bigger than yourself, otherwise you make things your god on this earth. And what I mean by that is. You you'll put attention into th- into things that, like I could make the I could idolize this podcast and make and make that that my god rather than having something way bigger than all of it. I think you need something way bigger than all of it in order to believe in something so that you can so that you can move through life with a set of you know morals that kind of work work and uh, to live by. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And the thing is, our parents teach us what they believe to be right and what they believe to be wrong. Now, that's guidance, don't get me wrong, but it's what they believe. Now, they might not be right, but because as we're growing up, that's who we look up to, we believe whatever they say. 
if your mum, when you was a kid, told you that the sky outside was red, you would be going to telling all the kids in school, no, 100% that's red. You wouldn't care what every other kid in that school said, would you? No. The sky's red. If your dad said the same, the sky's red. But like I say, sometimes they might not be necessarily right. And the Quran and Islam for me is such a simple and beautiful religion. And it it has a lot of morals, what travellers have, or should I say maybe used to have, which have now really gone out the window. Like you don't see them as much. Like uh, uh, 20 years ago, I would have said gypsies and travellers was probably the most moral people you would probably ever meet. Now, going back to that book, it keeps me on the straight and narrow. It's very good for work. And now some people might look at it and say, oh, he's turned to religion for work. No, that's not the case. I believe if something can help me in this life and the next, how is that a bad thing and how am I doing anything wrong? Yeah, yeah. I just think it's, I think it's the way you apply anything. It's the way it's... it's it, it, it simply it doesn't the the religion doesn't doesn't so much matter to me what religion anyone is. It's more so that I think that when I look at when I've spoken to the the entrepreneurs and the tr- and the people that feel the most whole to me in in all in more areas of life than not, they're the ones that believe in something way bigger than themselves. Because ultimately, if you just pursue. Um, being the richest man in the graveyard that's that is that is a uh, a road to destruction just as much as anything else absolutely well to be honest with you i think it's uh, it's it's very visible for the eyes to see that there is something bigger than us which is god where did it the, the, the conversation's endless but in reality it would all come back to a miracle what no man could create it must have started somewhere yeah yeah, it, it, it's physically impossible. And, and you just, but more so the way that you're living by it. I mean, that could be debated in scientists or debate and all that stuff. But more so the it's 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 you. The way I've seen you take it on is the fact of like you you don't openly talk about it a lot. Like only I've only heard it on a few podcasts. You mentioned it, and obviously I've seen it on your Instagram. You posted about it when you went over to I think it was Dubai, but. I think the way you use it is as is, is like a as a tool to keep you on the straight and narrow, like in terms of like like it, like it's, it's something to complement your business business and work ethic. It's just a couple of set a set of rules and systems you live by that, that allow you to to move forward. Like you probably you probably don't drink, right? Of course not, not anymore. No, 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 no exactly. Which 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 I I've never had alcohol, like because it's just fucking pointless. Like there's no net benefit to it. No. I just, I just think it's a set of, it's a good set of rules. It's, to it's, it's, it's not something that I'd hide. And to be honest, the reason I don't touch on it so often is because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the person you want to be asking these questions to. The imam is. I know very little. All I know is it's very good for me for today, and it's very good for me for the future. And anybody that's looking into it. It's only ever benefited me. It's only ever that from how I feel to what I do to getting up early in the morning to prayer. It's it's it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's it's. I wasn't a bad person before. I didn't think, oh my god, I feel like such a bad person. I need to turn to religion for forgiveness. I never felt like that. It went from good to better. Yeah. For me. Yeah. I I, I think I think it's I think it's obviously look the religions the religious. The, the religion as a topic is more in the news today, especially Islam and, and, and obviously becoming a Muslim and that, because obviously Tate. Tate's, on, Tate's been all over, Andrew Tate's been all over TikTok with reverting and, or whatever you want to call it, and he's put it more in the public eye. But it's even like, I see a lot of people like yourself that are, are, are turning towards Islam at, at certain points in their life, and I look at a lot of successful people and they've they've gone they've gone that way too. I don't think it matters what religion you are. I just think it mat- I think that it's the set of morals that these that these books have. Like whether, no matter what the religion you're talking about, the set of morals that they that, that you live by, when you actually break them down to the basics, your life is only is only going to be more empowered by living by the book than not by a book. Do you know what I'm saying? By having that what I wanted people to understand from 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 your background is that is that 
you had a great life. You was turning over pound notes, this, that, and the other. But then you're saying your life got better when you when you started to live by a bit more of when you started to live by a bit more of the rules. You, you cut out the drinking, right? Absolutely. What age did you cut out drinking? When I converted to Islam, so literally like six months, a few, ago, six months ago. How much has your life changed then since you cut out the drinking? I mean, how much has your pro- productivity gone up? Well, I've done six podcasts this year. Oh, this year, between reverting and. Not reverting. I've done six before. I've done one, two. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm what, what What are the numbers looking like? The numbers up since 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 you got off the alcohol. I'm talking about. In what sense? Like the money wise. Money wise, yeah. Absolutely. I've got no other time. Listen, what I'm saving. Yeah. What I'm saving is to go out and to go and drink. And when you get drunk, obviously you've never drunk, no. No. Like when you're drunk, you feel like you've got an endless pocket. You don't care about the money. You live for today. It's not. You have a good time. I've had some very good times whilst I've been drunk. But in reality, the cost that comes afterwards, you've got your guard down for a start. People could look to exploit and take advantage of you. Yeah. I, th- I, honest- I honestly believe there's not a person on the planet that doesn't seek alcohol to, to lose themselves for a moment. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't believe in the word that you drink alcohol for enjoyment. I, I really don't believe in that. I, I've, try, I've tried to believe in that, but I don't believe it's, I don't believe it's the truth. I honestly, I honestly believe that, that when you... Uh, drink, uh, drinking for enjoyment is having a, a glass of wine, a red wine with your meal, with your wife in, or your partner or something like that. That's drinking for enjoyment. Once you go past... Once you've gone past like five drinks on a night out, I can't see how that's in... I can't fathom this enjoyment bit because in the, because you're drinking something that, that puts you in a depressed state, which puts you in a less productive state, which takes you further away from what you truly want, which is to feel whole, complete, and 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 at peace. To be honest with you, I, I can only speak from my own experience. When I used to drink, which I do not drink anymore, it doesn't interest me. I've got enough confidence to go out and have a good time regardless, which I did have before and. There's not one alcoholic drink that you could put in front of me which I would prefer over a Coke r- throughout my whole life. Really? Not one alcoholic drink that I would prefer to drink over a Coke. I drunk to get drunk. Right. Because I wanted to be drunk. Why? To have a good time. But why did you feel that you needed to get drunk to have a good time? Because that's what everybody else was doing, being a sheep. And, here, and this is what I'm trying to get to. N- when 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 I tell people I'm not a drinker, and I'm sure when you tell people now when you're not a drink, you, you don't drink, people look at you like you've got something wrong with you, mm-hmm. right? Have you experienced that yet? I understand my reasons more than anything because once I have reverted or converted to Islam, obviously you've got a reason for it, right? But I've but I've no. but, but because I haven't got a reason, I understand. I, I, I get I get I I I can't say that 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 specific. I can't give that example. Mm-hmm. I'm like I don't drink because I'm. I've got better things to do in my life. Mm-hmm. And, they, and they look at me like, they, they tilt their head like this. They look at me and they're like, what? You never drink? Like, what, what do you do on a night out? I'm like, I have a fucking great time. I talk to people and I have a great time. And when I've had enough, I go home. Yeah, but and then, do you know what I mean? That's how the conversation starts. Mm-hmm. Because because people inherently have been taught since and, and indoctrinated into believing that this is the way forward. Where I think, I think, I think if you actually drank a lot less, everyone... Still drink. I'm not. There's. I'm not demonising drinking. There's. There is sociable drinking. There is drinking to have a good time, like with what we've both said. But I think that many people that listen to this podcast would get a lot more out of their business life, mindset, relationship with their partners if they just hold on a minute. Is this taking me to where I want to fucking go? Listen, a a lot, a lot of evil. A lot. It's the root of evil, isn't it? Not the the only root of evil, but it is. A lot of bad things happen by a drink. If you eliminated alcohol completely, think how many lives drink driving. uh, People that have have fell into a deep depression because of alcoholism. It does happen because because it is a depressant. Well, while you're on it, it's not. But once you once once it wears off, you know you don't feel great, do you? But the problem is, if everybody was to remember the hangover. Nobody would drink, would they? But they don't. They remember the good time that they had. Everyone wants to try and forget the hangover. Yeah, I do. I, I, yeah, and I just think if if we, it, it's all about to me, it's all about becoming more conscious. Yeah. And what and the reason why I, I wanted to get someone, you know, who's twenty five, who's actually smashed life like you have, on the podcast is because 
you're you're like I haven't got time to drink because I've got fucking places to be, people to see, deals to do, and I want to I want to take my life over there, and I want everyone to have have th- that drive and that driven mentality mm. towards what they want, and it doesn't matter if if they don't want the the ten million pound business. I'm not bothered about that. I'm just saying, like in all areas of your life becoming more conscious with not only what you eat what you put in your body how you train how you move how you talk to yourself becoming more conscious at all levels is what is going to take you towards that north star well like i say is um uh you got to live the life you got to live the life same as a professional boxer for example for a professional boxer you don't need that he doesn't dip his toe in and out of the water and you know fight when he sees fit You've got to live the life. You've got to live the life. And that's the same in business or the same with any any area of your life that you want to complete. You have to live the life. How, how was boxing since you were a kid? How's that instilled? What's that instilled in you? Discipline. Disciplined in abundance. That I can handle it. Very, 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 very. And also teaches you a lot of life skills that things don't always go your way life is hard boxing yeah. what well, i would say the hardest sport fucking right is in the world it's horrible and, it, and and once again it's a perfect example of success isn't it because everybody goes and watches and only sees the fight when in reality considering the training camp that you've done that would be the easiest part Let's say a 12 round fight, you get in there and fight for 36 minutes. When in reality, the last eight months, you've literally been more or less, you haven't been able to eat what you want, you've been on a water diet, you've been running twice a day, training twice a day, every single day, running off of of, of very low fuel because you're on a diet. I don't know how other people's uh, uh, diets are, but for me, I've always struggled with my weight. What are you walking around at now? At the minute? Yeah. 67 kilos. And you box the super fifty nine. Yeah, 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 fucking elbow. <laughs> yeah, that's heavy, isn't it? Fifty nine. But I love boxing again because it keeps me on the straight and narrow, and it keeps my mind content. And I think it's very good for you, and I think it's very good for anybody. And I think, uh, um, you know, it, it would also the people you meet in boxing gyms are very much alike in different ways. If you understand where I'm coming from, go on. Like, well, the, you, they're all aiming for the same thing, like you say. Yeah. All to be great fighters. I've met some ve- a lot of good contacts, a lot of good solid people via boxing. Mm. See, I've I've seen both sides of boxing. There's there, there's two sides to boxing that that me and you have both seen, but not many people have. It's like there's there's a there's a there's a there's a, a good side like you're talking about and there's a, there's a dark side and you have to know what side of the line you're treading because there's a lot of naughty people in that sport, you know what I mean? And, and can, you can get in some right, wrong circles by being around it. But I, I like to, but the positive benefit of being around boxing to me is is it teaches you the work ethic and the mindset required that, like you say, not everything's going to go your way in life. You're going to have to take a few licks. You're going to have to get up off your ass a few times and, you're gonna, and sometimes you're going to turn up one day and... You, you're just not going to have your day, and you've got to get up and go back the next day and 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 re-engage in that. Exactly, and that and that's a great epiphany at life because if it wasn't like that, you know, you, you you'd you'd be lost, right? Hundred percent. Uh, so when are you next fighting? I'd like to get out in March, so that'd be in six weeks' time. I'm, I haven't started a camp yet, but I have been training, ticking over to keep myself relatively fit. So when I do go in camp, I'm just Practicing boxing, not getting fit. Yeah, so, yeah, because th- th- that's another thing that that um, you can't be go- you can't be turned up to a boxing camp trying to get fit. I, d- I, d- I think I think a boxing camp. But listen, you do need to get fitter than you are. Don't get me wrong, but you need to you need to uh, uh, roll into your eight or twelve weeks well, with a base fitness. Exactly, exactly. You don't need to be you don't need to be going in there. For, training to get fit because you're not learning anything you're not practicing a game plan now to be honest i do think that having a game plan in boxing is either in or there now you can watch and study an opponent and see how you're going to fight you don't know how they're going to turn up on the night they could be studying you and knowing that you're studying their last fight and come out completely different 
So it's hard. It is hard to have a game plan and study a game plan, but you can brush up on what you're doing. Like if your hands low, practice keeping your hands up. If you're unfit, all you're trying to do is survive. Now you don't want to have that mentality in a boxing ring, just trying to survive. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's yeah. not the mentality you want. And if that's you the don't want that for life either. No, and if that's the mentality you've had through your camp, your mind trains as well as your body. I th- and again. I would encourage everyone who listens to this to go down to a boxing gym and just start doing some form of boxing training because what Alfie's saying there is, is, is it, it, it's, it's, it's something you can approach life with. You know what I mean? I think, I think you'd, in, I think most people, if they did boxing training throughout the week, would earn more money in their, in their life because they'd just be more dedicated to other things outside the gym because of how dedicated they are in the gym. Because when you're in, when you're in boxing gyms regularly, you're not drinking, you're not smoking, you're not doing drugs, you're on a health kick, you're running through endorphins because you've got more endorphins running through your body and because of the, because of the, there's just something about a boxing gym. You, you and I both know when you walk into a boxing gym, there's just something about the fucking feel of the place that makes you alive. And when you come out alive, as far as I'm aware, in my life, and I've seen it, like when you come out of a boxing gym feeling alive, you do better business, you do, you earn more money. Of simple, simple as that. And, it's, and, it's a natural high, isn't it? I think I think you, whether that's boxing or jiu-jitsu, I just think that's something you should apply in your life. But is there if if there's some like key bit, if there's some key things that you'd say to this audience to put into their lives, predicated on your experience, what would those key things be? Like I say, I keep it very straightforward and very simple: dedication and persistence. It's the only way. That, it's the only formula I know which will work for everybody. Now I could tell you something what would work for you. There could be somebody listening that it wouldn't work for them. But what I can tell you is, you and whoever's listening, dedication and persistence. Keep telling yourself that. Dedication and persistence. That's it. Very simple. Keep things simple. Yeah. And and it it truly is about keeping keeping it simple, keeping it in flow. You know, don't make things so complicated. What's, what's, What's worked for me might not work for other people. But people still, regardless how much I tell them to go and do something, they still might not have the ability to do it. But everybody has the ability to be dedicated and be persistent. It's a choice whether you don't want to be dedicated and you don't want to be persistent. It's a choice. That's up to you. But I can tell you, you can be dedicated and you can be persistent. And whatever you're doing, it will pay off. And what do you think is the if there was if there was one domino that you could knock over in most people's lives that would allow them to find that dedication faster than if if that domino stood there? What would the domino be that you knocked over? I don't understand. So if if, if the domino might be alcohol, it might be a bad attitude, it might be the, what it, you know. Many people go through what what is the what is the commonality you see that stops most people from getting to this dedication that you find. Not having no self belief, thinking that it's out of their reach. Self belief is something I obviously massively believe in, and I think self belief is instilled within you. You know, I think confidence is an exterior thing. I never work on confidence because confidence to me could be shattered. I think our self belief was taught in a boxing gym. Mm. I think that's where you get it from the boxing trainer. Is that where you got it from? No, I'll tell you, I got, I got, I got said a saying once. I got so I got told the same once when I was a young kid. And I got told on the reverse of this, and let me explain. Somebody said to me, if it can, it will, it's when. Now, he didn't say it to me as in, if you can be a millionaire, you will be a millionaire, it's just when. He was saying on the reverse, as in a bad idea. Let me give you an example. Go in skin, losing all your money, yeah? Right. If it can, it will it's when. And I looked at him and I thought, do you know what, that's right. Because when you think about something going wrong, you, think, cool, right. you know what I mean? It usually does happen, doesn't it, you know? But just bear in mind, if you can, it will, it's when. Then you're expecting it. So then I looked at him and I said, well, what about the other side of that? Like, if I can be a billionaire, will I? He went, if it can, it will, it's when. And I thought, like, that's a bit of me, that. Now, you know, it's another one if 
is your glass half empty or is it half full? And if I said to you, if it can, it will, it's when, what would you, because we're talking about positive stuff, you'd think I mean in a positive manner. Yeah. So it's, so what you're saying is there's many sayings out there that could empower your life but are perhaps put on you from the constraint of negativity. It's, there's, say, there's, there's saying and quotes what's helped me all along the way and there's also some that are very damaging that I read. Give me an example of something. Oh, some about enjoying your life and this and that and the other. For me, that's not good for me to read. It might be for somebody else, but it's not good for me. I don't want to read that because in deep down, I probably know that I'm missing valuable time. I'm going to be thirty in a minute and then not gone to half the places that I want to because I'm willing to make the sacrifice. But in reality, I want to bury that at the back of my mind. Yeah, you understand what I'm coming yeah, from. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. So I try and pick out the quotes that I want to read. That you yeah. know, live like some won't, so live like some can't. That's a bit of me. Yeah. Now I read that and I take that on board. Yeah, yeah. It's all about putting the right information into your mind that actually suits your purpose. Exactly, exactly. Do you know what I mean? And and but in order to in order to, but if you but if you are someone out there who doesn't have self belief, mm-hmm. right? Doesn't doesn't have the self belief that me and you both have because mm-hmm. you know you know that's instilled. Mm-hmm. How do they instill that? You got to train your mind again. Reading, but how? But how? But how? I don't know. I've never had to do it. I'd be lying because I'm not. So you I've reckon never, that's something that we're born with? Self belief. You don't reckon that's. I think instilled? it might have also have a bit of a knock on effect to the people that's around you. Because listen, we all need someone to cater to our ego and say yes, you can do that. If you've lived the life of getting knocked back all your whole life, told no, 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 you need to eliminate yourself from that circle and be around positive people. Yeah. Saying that yeah, I can do that, or yeah, I am going to. Uh, that, like you know it is like so clear so 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 one so if i was to put it into a process from what you just said there is first first thing is clear cl- clear clear your environment and clear your clutter that's friends that's that's you know cutting down time doing toxic things that aren't taking you towards go so it's clear out your clutter first mm-hmm. right and then and then relentlessly focus on on you know once you ascertain what you truly want, it's, it's, it's focusing on that mindset that's going to allow you to get there and then working on the self-belief to keep it, to keep brainwashing yourself into, into, that, into that mindset. Exactly. Because I, I, I was reading something and it's so profound. It's like you're exactly what you believe you are at all times because whatever you believe in your mind, you project out energy-wise into the world. That is whether whether you, whether people believe it or not. I, I just I just believe it. And if you're in an if you're in a in any slightly negative area of your life, you're being negative or that energy. You're just attracting more of more of that into your life. So you see energy and that. I just like you know. I try and get, I can only do what I can do. Do you know what I mean? I try and uh, I do that. I'm not the biggest believer, like, with taking up the religion that I have, I believe in God, and I do, I, it's just hard, it's, it's hard, like, I don't really believe in luck, I believe things, it is what you make it, it's in, it's in God's hands, and the thing is, God give you a brain of your own to use. Yeah. That's when people say it's in God's hands, like, that's down to you, what you think is up to you. Yeah. So, so, con- so, contro- no so, so then control your thoughts, control your life. Absolutely. Course. So just so just work on things that allow you more peace and allow you to control your thoughts more. Exactly. Sitting with yourself, you know, and and, and understanding understanding more t- more time spent understanding what you truly want and less time spent pursuing what other people have told you to want. Yeah, follow listen, following flocks is 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 a slippery road. You know, a slippery road. But it, couldn't that be the same said for religion? Because that's a flock, isn't it? Yes, but in a sense, when I say that, it's a flock of a good, beautiful thing with everybody heading in the right direction, worshipping God. Going out drinking is negative. Yeah, It's not good. It has diverse effects, extremely bad. Now you can attach things to religions and 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 cults and cultures, but you know that, that all that's to do is make headlines. Because, yeah. like I said, there's good and bad in all people. Yeah, and it, it, yeah, it, it's, I think a lot of the bad headlines just are just to try and separate people from actually being able to find themselves and find something bigger than themselves, essentially. Mm-hmm. But 
mate. I if the, and and just to finish on, if there's one, I know you said determination, but if there's one piece, if you had to check out the world tomorrow and you you can only leave this audience with one pearl of wisdom that will allow them to move their life forward in all areas, what would it be? Be willing to sacrifice for what you want. And unfortunately, it's, uh, uh, I, I like a lot of quotes, people about saying live in the moment and this and that and the other. Yeah, it's great. If you want to live in the moment, then live in the moment. But unfortunately, if you want a future, then you can't live in the moment. Love when that. the time's right, then live in whatever moment you want when you're in a position you've achieved your goals. Because who wants to walk this earth and not achieve their goals? There's, there's, there's seasons. So what I've learned is there's seasons to everything. And in the season I'm in now, I'm in, I'm in the I'm in the relentless, relentless pursuit of of being the best educational podcast in the world, and that means I have to sacrifice some levels of lifestyle in order to achieve that. Not just for me, but for my bigger goal of serving this audience and for serving the world on a better level. And it's as simple as that. People are people are watching you on on this podcast, and you've the stuff that you've given up. They're watching me, and you're just saying to them they've got to understand that in order to get to where they want to go they've got to get something's got to give something's got to give not just something loads of stuff loads of stuff you've got to sacrifice you've got to be willing to sacrifice your life now I'm not saying do that I'm saying you've got to be willing to something comes up and you've right let's say you've got a date and there's a business deal at the same time you cancel that date let's say you're going out it's a family's birthday party you missing that birthday party to go and assist a business yeah. If you're not willing to do that, then be willing to live normally. Yeah. Yeah. And not no, extraordinary. Yeah. And you're put on this planet to live an extraordinary life. We have the opportunity by putting air in our lungs and a brain in our head to be able to. Now, we're not gifted or granted it, but we are given the tools to be able to, especially with the internet now. Yeah. You can learn a little bit about a lot, about everything, very quickly by your telephone. You can educate yourself extremely quickly, more or less for free. You have to pay a phone bill. I, I don't know how to say it any better than that, to be honest. Like, at the end of the day, like, there really isn't any, any excuse to not mm. download something that's going to empower your life every day of the week. Absolutely. And that's it. And that, my friends, is Alfie Best Jr. And mate, if, and just, I just want to say, I'll put, I'm going to put Alfie's details at the bottom of this podcast so you'll be able to click and follow him on Instagram and stuff like that. And if you're in London and you're looking for watches, he's the man. If you're in London and you're looking for tickets, he's the man. And uh, I look forward to having, obviously, your dad on in the future as well. And I also look forward to, over the years, seeing your progress and how it's measuring up against your dad and, and what yeah, he's achieved and, well, and, and all that stuff. The door will always be open to come and do another podcast. Isn't it be pointless to do it in another week, but give it a couple of years or a year uh, or so, come uh, back, mate, see where we'll, I'm at. We'll track, it, we'll track it throughout your career. and I, mate, I'm, mate, I've no doubt you're going to smash it and I just appreciate the value you've dropped in here. The guys, do me a solid favour, yeah? Hit the like button if you're on YouTube. Drop me a, a star rating if you're on Spotify. Give me a review if you're on Apple. Uh, share it with your friends I'm trying to put as much wisdom in your ears as possible I'm trying to bring on the best people that I know so you can learn the wisdom that's needed and guys much love guys do me a solid favour drop a comment below this video and let us know who you want on the podcast next